Vinyl Community, Dave the Pickup Artist with you for another week of psychedelic craziness. Uh, we had the uh, uh, record show here in Jacksonville uh, last weekend. Uh, lots of familiar face lips. Had a great time. Um, yeah, and I picked up some uh, record store day releases also. So let's get started with one. I finally got a hold of Bowl of the Woods. This is, of course, the third studio album from the 13th Floor Elevators. <laughs> This is their uh, 1969 album, and this is kind of like, you know, the uh, Buffalo Springfield's third album. It was kind of like put together with uh, demos they were working on as the band was kind of falling apart. That's kind of what this album is. Um, we've got two members, uh, Tommy Hall and Rokey Erickson were... Uh, both heavily into uh, psychedelic uh, drugs, uh, namely LSD. And in the case of uh, Roki, he was also having illegal problems. So those two guys aren't actually on most of this album. I think Roki's got two songs that he wrote, but this is, uh, a lot of this is uh, Sutherland, the uh, guitar player, Stacy Sutherland, who was a guitar player. Um, but, uh, yeah, I put this on. This is, I don't know if this is the first time I heard this, but it's a great psychedelic album. Uh, we're away from the uh, garage rock of their first album, Psychedelic Sounds. And this has got to more of a, kind of a deep psych feel to it. It's, uh... And on the very last song it closes with, May the Circle Remain Unbroken by Roki Erickson. And it sounds like Roki is like in a deep trance and he's playing maybe an electric organ or something. It's a very eerie way to close this album. <laughs> Institution. Um, he wasn't really uh, mentally ill. He uh, was trying to skirt some uh, drug uh, uh, le legal problems involving drugs, uh, namely marijuana. They were arresting people for uh, marijuana and they were serving a hard time. And uh, Rookie kind of did a uh, uh, Patrick McMurphy and uh, kind of feigned uh, mental illness. <laughs> Are you threatening violence to, to uh, get a shorter stay in this um, uh, Rusk, or I think it's called Rusk, mental facility in Texas. But uh, he had got out of it. Uh, but uh, Roki passed away in, uh, I think about 10 years ago. Now, Tommy Hall, who was having some drug issues back then is still with us. And he uh, turned 80 last September. I do not know about the other guys. And also our crack 
private investigator has uncovered never before seen photos of the uh, 13 floor elevators playing a church uh, club in Austin, Texas in 1960s. I believe it's 1966. <laughs> Well, my favorite 13 Floor Elevators album is Easter Everywhere. I picked this one up at Tone Bender down in St. Augustine. Paid 16 bucks for it several years ago. <laughs> Got a back cover. Now, a lot of people say they don't like the jug player on the 13th floor elevators. And I disagree, I like the jug. It gives the band a unique sound. This is on a, this is a reissue and they recreated the uh, international artist label. And this is, yeah, this is probably my, yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, 13 Floor Elevators album. Uh, not a bad track on it. We've got a, a great cover of Dylan's Baby Blue. My favorite track though, well, well there's I've got two of Earthquake is great. Levitation is a great track. Uh, but my favorite <laughs> is the first track on side one, Slip Inside This House. I uh, had a couple of uh, more uh, Walmart pickups they, from the sale. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, uh, basically, this is a whole fill. I needed a copy of volume four. So I got this uh, very cool 180 gram vinyl remaster. This is from 2012. It's got to sound better than my old 80s <laughs> CD. These 80s Black Sabbath CDs sound terrible. If you got the, the first batch of uh, Sabbath CDs that went around when they were first coming out, uh, they're really starting to sound terrible. Um, and I got the fourth uh, trip from the uh, Brown Acid series. Love the Brown Acid. I'm uh, slowly picking up these. And this is on a cool uh, kind of a maroon marble color. And what's cool about this, what I liked about this, is uh, we've got three bands from my home state of Ohio. Uh, we've got from Columbus, Ohio, the Headstones with Carry Me On. <laughs> We've 
got a band called Wrath from Canton, Ohio. <laughs> With Rock and Roll Fever, and that's from 1975. And from Youngstown, Ohio, we've got the Irving Furbush. <laughs> I think I got that right. And they've got a cool song called The Train. But I have to say, my after listening to this whole album, my favorite track is the first one on side B. We've got Zeke's with Coming Back. <laughs> unreleased I thought all of these were pre previously unreleased but we've also got bands from Chicago Indiana Texas Idaho and as far away uh, as Melbourne Australia one uh, band from Australia called Ash but yeah another great psychedelic trip through brown ass and next one is five of course uh, you can, I saw somewhere you can get the, the entire collection in one fell swoop, but I'm not sure how that works. Uh, I pulled out a great band from the, uh, they had three albums. The first one was this one. We got Blues Image. <laughs> with Blues Project, the Blues Magos, uh, Blues Traveler, or uh, Blues Oyster Cult. <laughs> but yeah, this is a great uh, band started by Mike Panera uh, in 1966. The first album, this came out in 69, so it took them a couple years to get a record deal. Um, there's a, there's some bios and information on the back about each player. These guys went on to other, all went on to other bands. One guy went on to join Cactus and, uh, uh, they, that was a moderately successful album. Then they put out their second album, um, uh, Open, Blues Image Open. And they actually had a hit single off this, and I think went all the way to number four on the billboard called Ride, Captain Ride. album they put out one more album uh it was kind of a 
It was right when they were breaking up, they put, put out their third and final album, which I have not heard yet. For these albums are on Akko with the uh, very cool original inner sleeves. To old D.H. Lawrence. Sugar Bears the other day, and uh, I hadn't been in there in about a week, and <laughs> I found this gem that I cannot believe has never been in my collection. This is the first time I've had this album in my collection. Yeah, it was $10 in perfect condition. Of course, this has got everybody on it. We've got uh, opens with the two Steppenwolf songs. Then there's something interesting on here. It says the weight is the third song, but it's done by the band Smith. The song is performed in the motion picture by the band and is not available for this album. We have taken the liberty of including the song as recorded by Smith in this package. Now, the version of uh, The Weight by Smith is good. It's a great version. Smith was, uh, I think, a band that had a couple of hits. Um, but that's interesting. I did not know this. I, don't, I wonder if all the albums are like that with the Smith version instead of the band version. Uh, you know, we've also got the Birds, the Holy Model Rounders, who, who became the Fugs, are on here with, uh, if you want to be a bird, uh, Fraternity of Man with Don't Bogart Me. Come on, man. Jimi Hendrix at six was nine, and we've got a great track from the Electric Prunes. And it closes with two uh, songs from Roger McGuinn. Yeah, great soundtrack. Or, or for Britney's tour. She's down in, it's kind of warm in Brazil right now. It's $10 <laughs> well spent. Uh, I listened to some Bee Gees this week. Uh, the first one, when you mention Psych, you gotta mention the Bee Gees first album, 1967. This is actually their first international album. They did two uh, Australian, I don't know if they were albums or 10 inch EPs, but yeah, this is the first one and it's a great debut. Uh, first off, the cover is very cool, very psychedelic, and it was designed by uh, Klaus Bormann, who did a lot of work with the Beatles. He uh, also did the uh, Revolver cover. But this is a great debut. <laughs> Britney's tour. She's down in, it's kind of warm in Brazil.
Brazil right now. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, we've got a uh, hit, uh, we've got uh, some garage on here, and we've even got a really kind of a dark psychedelic song. got these uh, Gregorian chanting and yeah this is a cool album this is a original copy I believe but it sounds like it too unfortunately this is a G plus and uh, yeah after that they followed it up with horizontal in 1968 <laughs> your gob. Shut your gob. Now, when they recorded their first international album, the first BG album, they added two musicians. They added a uh, drummer and a uh, lead guitarist. And they, those two guys played on the first five Bee Gees albums. After that, they kind of went, after, I think it was this album, they put out another album. Then one of the brothers split to do a solo thing, and then they they reformed uh, back in the '70s, and uh, you know the rest is history. But yeah, the uh, the first uh, Bee Gees albums are psychedelic pop, psychedelic albums. The one I'm looking for uh, uh, now is called Odessa, and it's really hard to find a copy of that because. The album was made out of felt, and a lot of them just went up in smoke because of the felt cover. And they, somebody didn't put a cigarette on them or something, they'd burn up. All the covers were burned up. <laughs> Finally, this week in 2011, uh, we lost Ed Cassidy, who was the founder and drummer from the band Spirit. Uh, Ed Cassidy uh, was 89 years old. He was a lot older than uh, the other members of the band. <laughs> and a lot of the uh, rock icons back then. Uh, he was also Randy California's father-in-law. And uh, Ed was also featured on several of Spirit's album covers, including this one from their third album called Clear. And uh, yeah. Spirit, Ed Cassidy, 89 years old. He had a pretty good run. See you next week.